And welcome to Racing in the Draft. My name is Mark, and we are headed to Sonoma, California, wine country. To do a little road course racing. But before we do that, let's look at last week's results from Gateway Worldwide Technology. Huh. <laughs> Tell you what, if you like drama, you definitely loved last weekend's race at Gateway. It was, uh... It was fun. It was interesting. A little controversial at times. Uh, Ross Chastain decided he would stick his nose everywhere it possibly could. Uh, he, he's not uh, not making a whole lot of friends, and uh, he needs to start making some friends if he's going to have a chance to uh, advance on to deep into the playoffs. That's all I can say. I mean, he's a heck of a race car driver. He's a lot of fun to watch, and he doesn't give a whole lot of Fs about it. Um, he's there to win races, and he's ruffling feathers. But either way, uh, quite exciting race. Um, at least I thought it was. I thought it was very entertaining. I thought uh, the length of the race being right around three hours was just about perfect. Uh, great way to spend Sunday late afternoon. And did fairly well at DraftKings. Hopefully you did the same. Um, we had uh, one Dominator... If you can call it a dominator, he led 66 of 245 laps, being Kyle Busch. Now, if you're looking at the DraftKings side of things, I mean, he was 25 points ahead of everyone else. So that does signify something. I mean, a lot of that came from 10 spots from 12th to 2nd. Uh, he led 40, or 66 laps, had 46 fast laps, which was the best of everyone. Um... We had a whole host of other drivers who led, you know, over 10 laps. Joe Legato, Martin Truex, Ryan Blaney, Kurt Busch, Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell, 34 laps led. The most he's led in a NASCAR Cup race ever in a race. So, Michael McDowell is definitely headed in the right direction. And, if we look back at Michael McDowell's early days of racing, he's a road course guy. This next-gen car may lead to uh, Michael McDowell being kind of a sneaky pick. Just something to think about. But, how about A.J. Allmendinger? Uh, <laughs> having the worst start to probably any race that he probably could ever remember at Portland in the Xfinity Series, and then turning around and getting a top 10 at a track that he's never been to or raced at. Um, starting 35th, and working his way all the way up to 10th. Just kept his nose clean. You know, they, they said that this track was really tough to pass at. Well, AJ figured out a way to gain 25 spots. So, in my opinion, not that tough. I mean, Eric Jones from 21st to 7th. I called Eric Jones out. I thought Eric Jones would be a great pick last week. Um, I mean, Martin Truex Jr., that one kind of shocked me a little bit. But he was okay in practice. Joey Logano winning the race. Hands down, he had the fastest car all weekend. They unloaded fast, they practiced fast, they qualified fairly fast, and he was he was up there in contention all day, and when it counted, he decided to go out and win the race. But our optimal line of challenge after 15 races, Ross Chastain still with a commanding lead of eight. Uh, Eric Jones and Kyle Busch coming in second at six. Ace Elliott with five, Daniel Suarez, William Byron, Austin Dillon, Christopher Bell, all with four. Michael McDowell has got three optimal lineups that he's made. Ty Dillon with three. Um, and Kyle Larson, the guy who dominated last year, only with three. So, well, this, this year's been quite exciting. We've got, uh, what is it, 11 races left before we get to the, uh, no. 10, yeah, 11 more races before we get to the playoffs. And then it's gloves off. <laughs> I'm telling you, if they haven't had the gloves off yet, it's going to be wild. All right, we are headed to Sonoma, California, as I said earlier. Kyle Larson won this race last year. Uh, they have changed the track layout. Um, and I can't remember what they called the chicane carousel. They, they But they reverted back to what they call the historic cup um, course. So what they've done is they have um, shortened it by a little bit, but given it a little bit better passing zones. So the track length is now 1.99 miles, 12 turns, 
110 laps is our race length, so Dominator points will not be a major factor this weekend. Um, we'll, I think because what you're looking for is trying to find a, a decent amount of guys that will finish in the top 10 or top 5, ideally. And I think out of that group, you'll find that there, you'll have one or two guys that will end up being Dominators because of how they finish. And this place is not the easiest place to pass. There are passing zones, um, but it it's it, it can be a little tough and tricky at times. Um, but your fast cars will be fast. We'll find that out when they practice on Saturday. And there's a handful of guys that will be running the truck race on Saturday also. Uh, Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, uh, to name a few that I can think of right off the top of my head. But either way, should be quite exciting on the road course our second attempt in the next gen car and this is a classic track it's been around for a long time all right so when we look at our track comparisons when we're looking at some history and some data because they only come to sonoma once a year and they did not come in 2020 because of the pandemic um we also are going to be looking at watkins Glen, circuits of the america or coda and road america which they raced at once last year now watkins Glen and road america the only data we have is with the old gen car and thing with Sonoma. So the Coda information with this next gen car will impossibly be valuable. So the real reason you guys came is let's look at these driver by driver breakdowns. Um, as always, I will kind of go through a little bit of this if you are new to my channel. If you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Would love to have you join um, my little, I don't know what you call this, podcast or video breakdown of DraftKings and fantasy racing and NASCAR. But either way, so when I'm looking at data for this, usually it's the last five races at a track. So I mean, a place like Martinsville where they race twice a year, I don't look at any other information for this grouping here. It's literally the five races that they had at Martinsville, but because we only come to Sonoma once and they changed the track configuration back to 2018 and prior, I've included 2018, 19, and 21. There was no 20. Um, I'm looking at Coda from this year because of the next-gen car at a road course. And Watkins Glen, which is races somewhat similar from last year. So out of those five races, we look at this information here. Kyle Larson, 10,600. I do have him ranked as a four. Um, in those five races, he's got two wins. Two top fives, three top tens, four top twenties, a 37.8 DraftKings average, an 8.6 average finish. He finished first here in this race last year at Sonoma. And he's got 22 total starts on road courses where he has two wins, five top tens, five top fives, eight top tens, and 15 top twenties. So that should give you a breakdown. We do not know their starting position or any practice information because they don't practice until tomorrow and qualify tomorrow and then. On Sunday they will race. I will be doing a live update on Sunday morning bright and early at about 9 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, feel free to join me then and hit me up with any comments prior to then on this uh, on this video and uh, I'll either answer them in the comments or save it for the Sunday morning live. Join me then and have some questions. Who, what kind of lineups are you thinking about running? Who do you think might be a dark horse? Who do you think uh, might go under-owned or potentially over-owned? I've got a couple picks that I'm going to kind of go through. Um, I think Kyle Larson is a natural. He'll probably be fairly heavily owned, um, and considering he's the reigning race winner here. Another one who was really quick here last year at Sonoma, Chase Elliott, and he's quick at almost all road courses, 10,400, number one on the power ranking, and out of our five comparison tracks, he does not have a win, which is a little surprising for a road course ringer, uh, but it does have four top fives, four top tens, four top 20s, a 33.9 DraftKings average, a 9.6 average finish. He finished second in this race behind Kyle Larson last year, 20 total road course starts. Now this is, <laughs> This is where the road course ringer part comes in. 20 total starts on road courses in the Cup Series. Seven wins, 12 top fives, 14 top tens, and 16 out of 20 top 20s. Yeah, basically it's really good on road course. All right, Kyle Busch, 10,100. Fifth on our ranking system and out of the five comparison tracks, he does not have a win in the last five. 
four top fives, four top tens, four top twenties. Hmm, very similar to Chase Elliott. A 37.7 DraftKings average. Hmm, beat Chase, uh, Chase Elliott. And a 9.8 average finish. Just a little bit worse of an average finish than Chase Elliott, not much. He did finish fifth here in the race last year. He does have three wins out of his 42 total road course starts, 14 top fives, 23 top tens, and 28 top twenties. Not shabby for somebody that's not considered a road course expert. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., 10,000. Martin's uh, close to being a road course expert. Uh, third on our ranking system. He has two wins in the five races that we're comparing. Three top fives, three top tens, five top twenties. 86, 61.7. That is the absolute highest DraftKings average. 61.7. And he has a fourth place average finish. Whew. He's quick. Um, yeah, so both of those are the highest. Uh, he finished third in this race at Sonoma last year. And he has 38 total starts on road courses with four wins, 14 top fives, 20 top tens, and 28 top 20s. Yeah, we did some... Pretty good road course racers. That's why they're priced at the top. Uh, Rush Estate, 9,800. Second on our ranking system. Now remember this ranking system also looks at kind of the what have you done for me lately. It's the last 10 actual races of this year. And Rush Estate so far this year has been um, class of the field. Other than he likes to wreck a lot of people. Um, but Rush Estate, 9,800. One win. On, and he did that at Coda earlier this year. One top five, two top tens, three top 20s in our road course comparison. 44.5 DraftKings average and a 13.3 average finish. He finished seventh here at Sonoma last year. And 13 total road course starts with, yep, that one win at Coda. Two top fives, four top tens, and five top 20s. Denny Hamlin. Oh, uh, Denny was part of Ross Chastain's uh, plow through the field, and Denny was not having it. Uh, yeah, go back and watch the race or see the comments if you've missed it. I'm, but I'm sure if you're tuning into NASCAR content, you're probably very aware of um, the shenanigans between Denny and Ross. Be interesting to see how that plays out for the rest of the year. Uh, Denny Hamlin, 9,600, 6 on our ranking system, and out of the last 5 road course comparisons, he's got 2 top 5s, 4 top 10s, and 5 top 20s, a 38.3 DraftKings average, an 8.4 average finish. He finished 8th here at Sonoma last year. 40 total road course starts with 1 win. 12 top 5s, 19 top 10s, and 28 top 20s. Alright, Ryan Blaney, 9,400 and ninth on our ranking system. And in the last 5 races on road courses that we're comparing, he has 2 top 5s, 3 top 10s, 4 top 20s, a 24.6 DraftKings average, and a 13 15th place average finish. He finished 10th here at Sonoma last year. 20 total road course starts with one win. Six top fives, 10 top 10s, and 16 top 20s. Not bad for somebody that's not considered a road course expert either. Uh, William Byron, 9,200. Uh, out of the five comparison starts, he has one top 10, one top 20, a 16.0 DraftKings average, and a 20.2 average finish. Yeah, William Byron's still trying to figure out how to do road courses. Um, 35th here in the Sonoma race last year. 16 total starts on road courses and no top fives. Only five top tens and eight top twenties. And half the time he finishes outside the top 20. Maybe William Byron will start to figure something out. Uh, Joey Logano, $9,000, eighth on our ranking system. And out of the five comparison tracks, he has one top five, top 10, top 20. A 12.0 DraftKings average, a 20th place average finish. Hmm. Not, stats are not too good for Joey on road courses, at least in our comparison tracks. But he did finish fourth here at Sonoma last year. And out of the 34 road course starts uh, in his career, Joey has one win, 10 top five, 17 top tens, and 24 top 20s. Not awful, uh, but recently he's not done great at road courses. Uh, Christopher Bell, 8,911th on our ranking system. And Christopher Bell has three starts out of those five comparison tracks with two top 10s, two top 20s, a 30.7 DraftKings average, 13.7 average finish. He finished 24th here at Sonoma last year and 
10 total starts on road courses for Christopher Bell, where he does have a win at the Daytona road course, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, two top fives, four top tens, and four top 20s out of his 10 total starts. All right, next in line here, we've got AJ Almendinger, the road course ringer, 8,800, 10th on our ranking system. Two starts out of our comparison tracks. No top 20s. No top 10s, no top 5s. He's a road course ringer though, right? 17.0 negative DraftKings average. Ooh. An average finish of 37. Ooh. He did not race in this race last year. 27 total starts on road courses in the Cup Series, where he has two wins, five, only five. Road course ringer, right? Five top 10s. 13 top, or 5 top 5s, 13 top 10s, and 19 top 20s. Doesn't sound like a road course ringer to me. In fact, let's take a look at his stats here at Sonoma in the Cup Series. 37th, 7th, 13th, 13th, 9th, 37th, 37th, 14th, 35th, 38th. That's not good! His best finish on a road course in the Cup Series was in 2009, where he finished 7th. Don't believe the hype on AJ Elmendinger. I'm kidding. He is an extremely good road course racer. He's just not great at Sonoma, it looks like. So, keep that into mind. Want to bring you the facts and the data. AJ Elmendinger is not that great at Sonoma. Can you figure it out this weekend? I, I will probably have some ownership of AJ, to be perfectly honest. I'm sure if he does bad, I'll get burned on it. But he is as good as Chase Elliott on road courses, at least in the world of Xfinity. Not so much in Cup. He's only got two wins out of 27. For, what, Chase Elliott had seven wins out of 20? Yeah. You tell me who the road course ringer is. I'm kind of kidding. I'm being a little, little hyperbolic. But... Either way, next in line here, Chase Briscoe, $8,700, 18th on our ranking system, three starts out of those five comparison tracks, with one top 10, one top 20, a 29.6 DraftKings average, and a 17.3 average finish. Finished 17th here at Sonoma last year, eight total starts on row courses, no top fives, three top 10s, and four top 20s. Not, not awful, not great. Uh, Tyler Reddick, 8500 13th on our ranking system, three total starts on our comparison tracks, one top five, two top 10, two top 20s, a 33.8 DraftKings average, and a 10.3 average finish. Finished 19th here um, in the Sonoma race last year, 10 total starts on road courses for Mr. Reddick, with one top five, four top 10s, and seven top 20s. Austin Cedric, 8,400. Austin Cedric's actually a really good little road course racer. Um, he did finish sixth at Coda earlier this year. Um, so keep that in mind. He did, he did fairly well. Shut up. He's done fairly well in the Xfinity Series on road courses, so don't write, write him off. He finished sixth at Coda earlier this year in the Cup Series, um, so he does have that one start where he finished, he's got one top 10, one top 20, a 46.4 DraftKings average, and a sixth place average finish, where he's only got one race. Um, four total Cup starts for Austin Cedric, and both of them were in the top 10. So two top 10s, two top 20s. Keep that in mind. Austin Cedric may actually end up doing fairly well here. And he's racing smarter, racing better. He's having better finishes post Daytona. Um, so he's slowly starting to figure this out and he's starting to finish races. So Austin Cedric's starting to get the hang of it. Uh, Kurt Busch, 8,200, 12th on our ranking system. And in the last five comparison tracks, Kurt Busch has no top fives, two top tens, four top 20s at 34.7 DraftKings average and a 14.4 average finish. He did finish 6th here in the Sonoma race last year. 49 total starts. 49 pots on. Uh, on road courses with 1 win, 15 top 5s, 27 top 10s, and 37 top 20s. Pretty good for Kurt. 
All right, next in line here, we have got Kevin Harvick, 8,100, 16th on our ranking system. And out of the last five comparison tracks we're looking at, Kevin Harvick has one top five, four top tens, four top 20s, a 42.6 DraftKings average, and a ninth place average finish. Not bad, Kevin. Uh, finished 22nd here in the Sonoma race last year. 50 total starts on road courses. And he's got two wins, 11 top 10s, 26 top, 11 top fives, 26 top 10s, and 40, 40 out of 50 times he's finished in the top 20. So, I'll have to remember that. Kevin's not a bad little race, uh, road course racer. Alex Bowman, 7,900, 14th on our ranking system. In our, uh, out of our five comparison tracks, he's got one top five, three top tens, and four top 20s at 32.1 DraftKings average, 11.4 average finish. Finished ninth here at the Sonoma race last year. 20 total starts on road courses with three top fives, eight top tens, and 14 top 20s. Daniel Suarez, 7,700. Remember, Daniel was really quick and led pretty much the first stage at Coda and then ended up having some issues but he was really fast and has been fairly fast at road courses, even though these stats don't really show it. Um, so Daniel Suarez in the last five comparison tracks, oh, he's 19th on the ranking system. And out of those five comparison tracks, he's got two top 20s, a 15.6 DraftKings average and a 20.6 average finish. Isn't that great? Finished 12th here at Sonoma last year. 18 total road course starts to Daniel Suarez. Career with two top Fives, two top tens, and eight top twenties. Not awful. Uh, Eric Jones, 7,500, 17th on our ranking system. And in the five comparison tracks we are looking at, he does not have a top five, but three top tens, four top twenties, a 43.5 DraftKings average, and a 12.2 average finish. He did finish 11th here in the Sonoma race last year. 18 total starts on road courses for Eric Jones, with three top fives, eight Top 10s and 13 top 20s. Eric Almarola, 7,300, 23rd on our ranking system. And out of the five comparison tracks, he only has two top 10s, three top 20s, a 32.3 DraftKings average, and a 15th place average finish. He finished 27th here in the Sonoma race last year. 27 total road course starts uh, and no top fives. 27 times you've started a road course and never been able to finish in the top five. Interesting. Uh, two top 10s and 15 top 20s. All right, next in the line here, we've got Michael McDowell at 7,100 and out of the five comparison tracks. You know, Michael's a good road course racer. His stats just not that great. Uh, only one top 20, a 21.1 DraftKings average and a 21.6 average finish. He finished 28th here in the Sonoma race last year. 26 total road course starts with no top fives, three top 10s and 12 top 20s. Yeah, I guess his stats really are not that great. Um, even though he knows how to drive on a road course fairly well. So, surprising. I think may that most of that have been maybe equipment. We'll see how he does in practice and qualifying. Make sure you tune back in with me on Sunday, like I've said. About 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'll go live to break down practice and qualifying. And who I think might be coming from the back. And who might be able to hold themselves up front. All right, next in line here, we've got Cole Custer, $7,000, 31st on the ranking system. And out of the last five comparison tracks, Cole has one top 20, a 15.7 DraftKings average and a 21.7 average finish. He did finish 20th here in this Noma race last year. 10 total starts on road courses with one top 10, five top 20s. Austin Dillon, 6,900, 24th on our ranking system. Um, and Austin Dillon seems to finish in the top 20 fairly consistently. Just can't crack the top 10. Four top 20s out of the comparison tracks we've been looking at. 30.8 DraftKings average and 15.8 average finish. He finished 13th here at Sonoma last year. 23 total road course starts with 11 top 20s. No top 10s. So Austin Dillon's never finished in the top 10 on a road course. Maybe that'll change. On Sunday, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 6,800. Oh, man, Ricky had an awful day at Gateway. Um, ended up wrecking Bubba Wallace, and then Denny Hamlin decided to let him know that he was displeased with Ricky wrecking his car. Ricky Wreckhouse Jr., yep. All right, 26th on the rankings for Ricky, and 
Out of the five comparison tracks, he has two top 20s, a 10.3 DraftKings average, and a miserable 26.0 average finish. 37th here at the Sonoma race last year, 26 total starts on road courses with 14 top 20s, no top 10s. All right, Brad Keselowski, 6,622nd on our ranking system, and out of the five comparison tracks, Brad does not have a top five, but one top 10, four top 20s, a 20.1 DraftKings average, and an 18th place average finish. He finished 15th here at Sonoma last year, 32 total road course starts, does not have a win on a road course, uh, seven top fives, 11 top tens, and 24 top 20s. Ugh. All right, Bubba Wallace, 6,400. Now remember, Bubba actually ran really well at Coda in the Xfinity series earlier this year, and also was running fairly well until his pit crew screwed him over and he lost a tire, which means he lost crew chiefs, which means he lost positions on the track. But Bubba Wallace, if you take that away, was running actually fairly well at Coda. Coda and this are completely different tracks, but there are some similarities. They turn left and right. Um, Bubble Law 6,430th on our ranking system. Only one top 20, a 15.8 DraftKings average, and a 26th, mm, 26th place average finish. Finished 14th here at Sonoma last year. 16 total road course starts with only two top 20s, no top 10s. Justin Haley, 6,329th on the ranking system. Three starts out of the five comparison tracks with only one top 20. A 12.3 DraftKings average and a 27.7 average finish. He did not race in this race last year. Eighth on eight total starts on road courses where he's got one top 10, two top 20s. Chris Buescher will be back for this weekend's race at Sonoma. He cleared and good to go. 6,125th on the ranking systems, and out of the five comparison tracks, Chris Buescher does have four top 20s. No top 10s, though. Um, with a 27.0 DraftKings average and an 18.2 average finish, he finished 16th year at Sonoma last year. Uh, 21 total starts on road courses with one top five, one top 10, and 16 top 20s. Joey Hand, a road course ringer. These guys just don't ever seem to do anything. Now, is he probably well, maybe one of the better bets for some for an organization that goes out and tries to find a road course ringer? Yes, but I mean, out of his one start, he finished 39th. Only got five DraftKings points. He's got two starts in the Cup Series on road courses with no top 20s. Again, road course ringer? Oh no. Ty Dillon, 5,800, 31st on our ranking system. Three starts in our comparison tracks with no top 20s, but a 17.3 DraftKings average and a 29.7 average finish. Ooh, Ty. Uh, 14 total starts on road courses with only four top 20s. That's are not great. And we're starting to get to where we don't have a whole lot of stats or these guys' stats are not good. That's why they're priced at the bottom. So we'll have to kind of hunt for a gem or the needle in the haystack after practice and qualifying. But Harrison Burton, 5,600, 33rd on our ranking system, has one start on a road course, which was at Coda earlier this year where he did finish 22nd. Um, and the rest of the stats are what we've already talked about. Uh, Scott Heckert. 5400 racing for BJ McLeod this weekend. 21st on our ranking system. Has one start in the Cup Series out of our five comparison tracks with a 26th place finish and scored 25.0 drafting points. Um, three total starts. And once again, you guys are road course experts. Uh, three total starts, no top 20s. Starting to see a trend here. Uh, Corey LaJoy, 5300, 34th on a ranking system. Four total starts on the road course comparison that we're looking at. One top 20, a 17.3 DraftKings average, and a 24.5 average finish. Finished 18th here in the spring, or the Sonoma race last year. 14 total starts on road courses with three top 20s. Todd Gillen, 5,100. Um, Todd won the Kodo truck race. Kyle Busch in 2020. 
won the truck race. So Todd actually understands and knows how to run a road course. Good for Todd, 28th on the ranking system. One start in the Cup Series where he does have a top 20, 18th place. Did that at Coda, not bad. So he's really good at Coda. We'll see how he practices and qualifies to see if that might be a hidden gem not to overlook it. All right, next in line here, we've got Josh Blicky, $5,000, 35th on our ranking system out of three starts. He does have one top 20, a 21.3 DraftKings average and 27th place average finish. He finished 29th here at Sonoma last year. And out of his 13 total road course starts, he does have just two top 20. And last but not least, Cody Ware, 4,900, 36 on our ranking system, three total starts on road court, the road course comparison, with an 11.3 DraftKings average and a 32.8 average finish. He finished 34th here at Sonoma last year. 10 total road course starts and zero. Goose egg on top 20s. All right, so some optimal lineups at other road courses, including the Sonoma race from last year, where Kyle Larson fairly well dominated. That's, that's a much better indicator of dominating. Uh, 57 out of 92 laps led. Um, so one dominator there and two place differentials. So Kurt Busch started 30th, finished 6th. Um, Ross Chastain, hey, look at there. Ross appears in the optimal lineup here also. 29 was the starting spot, finished 7th. Um, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, and Watkins Glenn. So we had, oh, let's go back to Sonoma real quick. We had one dominator, two place differentials, two values. So two people who finished in the top five. Um, and value is anybody under 7,500. So we had two of those. So looking like we're probably looking at two place differential people potentially and two finishing spots. And out of there, we need to find two guys under 7,500. Let's see if that holds true with the rest of these. Uh, Watkins Glen from last year, 90 laps. We had two-ish dominators. 90 laps, and you led a third of them. So, I guess mean, you put the two of them together. They've led two-thirds of the race. Kyle Larson, Martin Drift Jr., 34 and 27. Laps led. Um, yeah, not bad. Um, so, we had two-ish dominators. Uh, one place differential, two value, and three finish. So we had three guys finish in the top five, two guys under 7,500, and only one person who came from the back and got himself a top 10, which was Chase Briscoe. All right, our Coda race from earlier this year, 69 laps, so almost half of what they ran at, are going to run at Sonoma. Uh, and Ross Chastain led 31 of 69 laps. Uh, we're starting to get closer to dominating territory. 17 fast laps, that's pretty good. But the one dominator, three place differentials, two value, and two finish. Not bad. I'm starting to see a theme here with the one dominator ish. You know, at least two to three, maybe four place differential guys. Um, really is going to have to take a look at what they qualify and where they practiced. See if there's some speed that they may have just missed in qualifying. Um, Road America, 62 laps. Uh, Chase Elliott wouldn't say he dominated with 24 of 62, but I guess a third, that's not bad. Um, but he started 34th. And this is all place differential. This, this, these guys screwed up um, qualifying last year and had pretty much started from the rear. I mean, Chase Elliott, Chase Briscoe, Austin Dillon starting 37th, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. finishing 38th. And they all finished in the top 17. So, we... That's a little uncommon, and I think that was just an issue of where they qualified. I mean, who knows? Maybe we have an issue in qualifying. That's the case, and you've got some of these guys that run fairly well. I mean, Kyle Busch started 40th. Missed that. Kyle Busch started 40th and finished third. Chase Elliott, 34th to first. The best starting position was 13th, but after that, everybody else 34th or worst? Yeah, it was. that was easy pickings. I, I did really well at uh, Road America last year, just because Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch are not going to finish. They're going to finish top 10, unless they've got a bigger problem, but either way. Alright, so that is not correct. Check back with me on 
Uh, Sunday, yes, but we're gonna be live around nine o'clock. So somewhere about nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday. Come back, I'll break down qualifying, practice, who my thoughts are for potential best dominators, place differentials, finishing spots, value picks, and all that. And would love to have some comments. Who do you think might be, who's gonna be your dominator pick? Who's your place differential guy? We won't know that till qualifying, um, but you know, who, who, who's in your lineup? Who's not in your lineup? Give me some, some reasons why, I would love the feedback. And uh, always like to kind of banter and kind of see where everybody else is, is, is lying. So thanks for joining me on this excursion into or a deep dive into the drivers for Sonoma this week. Uh, the weather's pretty warm here. The weather out there is going to be fairly nice. So we should have a, a good weekend of truck and cup series racing. Xfinity is off for two more weeks. But either way, thanks for joining. Have a great start to your weekend and hopefully we can finish strong with a great race at sonoma check back with me on sunday morning make sure you hit like and subscribe i'll talk to you soon thanks bye you're ready to roll here only about one thing tonight in the w so gotta be around the end to do that you're ready to roll tonight boys Let's go have some fun. don't get me any more fired up than i already am all the way to the checker you're fine nobody's gotta run checker five baby hell yeah Proud of you there, man. Good job, pal. Thanks, man. Good job, Holden. Great work, my man. Great work. Keep putting yourself in position. We'll win our share, right? We got one back today, brother. Good job. 10-4. Great job, guys. Excellent work, my man. Excellent work. Thank you. Man, that's awesome. Set out with a goal. We got it here, bud. Thank you very much. Really proud of you, man. Drove your butt off tonight. We had the best car here, bud. Probably killed our deal there. Just feel like a game one away. Yeah, boy! Way to rebound! Great job! Great job, bud. Really good job. Appreciate you hanging in there with us all weekend. What a weekend. Good job. Thank you.